day you'll be held accountable for all their lives lost. We further demand a minute of silence in remembrance of young Rex Kanyike Masai who lost his life yesterday. Thank you. Our statement today is uh, on police killing of 19-year-old Reska Nike Masai. Our solidarity with Gen Z and rejection of Kenya Kansas Finance Bill 2024. Thank you members of the media for honoring our invitation. Early this morning, we received the dreaded phone call informing us that Kenyan police had shot and killed 19-year-old Rex Kanyike Masai for exercising his constitutional right under Article 37 of our Constitution. It provides the right to peaceably and unarmed assemble, demonstrate, and picket. In a strongly worded statement, the African Union also reminded the Kenyan government that the right to peaceably protest is enshrined under Article 11 of the African Charter and must be respected. Rex, along with hundreds of thousands of other members of Generation Z, had assembled in Nairobi streets. He braved the cold front to hold up a placard and join in a protest song against the Kenya Kwanzaa regime. Rex, like all his comrades, was peaceful, unarmed, and nonviolent, but was senselessly gunned down by a police bullet. This is a tragic event with far-reaching consequences. Our coalition is extremely disturbed by Rex's fatal shooting. We have far too many memories of these tragedies, and our thoughts and prayers are with his family, with his friends, and the community <coughs> that has suffered so, suffered such a terrible loss. We stand with Rex, his family, and his comrades. We pledge to offer all our help required in seeking answers and justice. We demand that these perpetrators of police brutality be arrested and charged with murder before a court of law. Fellow Kenyans, it is evident that there is a big problem with our security officers, as these tragic shootings are not isolated events. Not long ago, when Kenyans marched for Mandamano, 75 people were killed because certain police officers opted to fire live bullets into peaceful crowds. This is a return of a police force instead of a police service, contrary to our constitution. Despite the publicly recorded crimes, the murders of the 75 victims are yet to be investigated and the perpetrators brought to justice. We have not forgotten and we will never forget. As a Zumil, and on behalf of the people, we demand that Inspector General Jafet Kome and Nairobi Regional Commander Mr. Adamson Bunge, Bunge, or is it Bunge, immediately tender their resignations for failing to protect the peaceful demonstrators. We also demand that the Director of Public Prosecution bring charges against Kome, Bunge, and their rogue officers for the murders of Rex and the 75. All Kenyans, um, all Kenyans' life, lives matter, and our police service just know that one day you'll be held accountable for all their lives lost. We further demand that all protesters detained illegally by state security agencies be released immediately and unconditionally. Ladies and gentlemen, yesterday, June the 20th, 2024, 
115 members of the National Assembly voted to reject the Finance Bill 2024. They stood in solidarity with the majority of Kenyans who have used all platforms available to categorically say no to the punitive and irredeemable bill. A number of them are here with us, and we congratulate you, Eshmiwa. And our coalition honors their contribution on the floor of the August House. It did not go unnoticed. You are indeed the patriots. Inexplicably, the other 204 MPs stood against the nation. They are the traitors and the exemplification of the biggest betrayal to Kenyans. Not cloud chasers, concerned with growing their TikTok numbers, as alleged by the Kenya Kwanzaa regime and the sympathizers. Their images have not been photoshopped or generated by AI. The Gen Z on the streets are your authentic constituents. Zakayo, your employers have said enough is enough. They want you to go home today and now, not on August 10, 2027. Fellow Kenyans, this is the Kenyan Spring, courtesy Gen Z. We are witnessing an organic and tribeless collective gathering of our youth who are tired of KK's wealth of bottomless lies, corruption, and disdain. Hour by hour, their numbers grow. This is a significant turning point in the history of our nation Com comparable to Sabasaba Day. We note the Kenya Gen Zs are issue driven and nonviolent. They demand transparency from authorities and institutions. Despite their young age, they are politically engaged and eager to participate in civic activities. We say, quote unquote, Musilale Bado Mapambano. Ladies and gentlemen, the grounds for the recall of the 2004 and the impeachment of Zakayo have never been clearer and more present. As Azimio, we have started the process. Let us do it for Rex and the fallen 75, and all those Kenyans suffering because of this betrayal of public trust. Azimio stands in solidarity with Gen Z and all aggrieved Kenyans in pursuit of social and economic justice. We will continue agitating for these changes through parliament, courts, and on the streets until Zakayo comes down. Gen Z is watching. Kenya is watching, and so is the world. God bless Kenya. Uh, the president and the over 200 members of parliament has all been clear and also said that as a Zemio, you have started the process. Will you kindly be clear on it? Uh, is it to mean that you would start or you have started an impeachment process against President William Ruto? By the way, uh, some of our colleagues would have been here, like Mishmoa uh, Jeremiah Kioni, Jubilee Secretary General, our sister Martha Karua, already in Nakuru, um, they continue with the Limuru 3 uh, deliberations. So they will be saying similar, similar stuff. Um, Edwin Sufuna, Mushma Sufuna, was here before, and he has had to rush to the city mortuary to confirm this news about Rex. You will recall that when, during our last press conference, he actually said, as Secretary General of ODM, <coughs> they had sent out letters to all their members. And we recognize some of the members of ODM like member for, I think, Kibra, actually heeded that call and voted no. Langata. 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 Member for Langata. Mishmua uh, Jalango. Those others, and we have three in, in Waipa, we're obviously going to start that process ourselves. We have uh, the case of member for Taveta, the count women rep for Kisi, and who is the third one? Dadab, who is actually the deputy leader of my party. Okay. Yeah. So we. Sorry, sir. Mishmar Eugene would like to add. 
And by the way, Shmua Paranya as well could add something. Uh, uh, and we have the majority uh, deputy leader, honorable member for Kadiani, Shmua Robert Bui. You may want to say something, but you are giving them instructions. This struggle continues. Mishmua Pio and I would have been here, but he left very early for Nguja. They have done a brilliant job. Okay. I, I, I think uh, on the issue of uh, the 204, as uh, His Excellency has said, the sanctions are clear as to the recourse that the parties will have against the defined MPs who actually betrayed the, the, the cause. But as to whether William Ruto is impeachable as a president, the constitution is actually very clear. And the law society, I think, had already given an indication that they are concerned about certain things that uh, he has done that actually constitute grounds for impeachment. And those are being compiled. And wherever and whenever a president violates the constitution, uh, there are grounds enough that the Constitution sets out. He's not above the Constitution, he's not above the law, and he can be impeached. So that is one option that is on the table. You are aware that our courts found the deployment of our police officers to Haiti as being unconstitutional. You are aware that he has defied the courts and gone ahead and insisted, just the way he has pushed this draconian bill down the throats of Kenyans. He has pushed that decision to deploy to Haiti against court orders. There are things that he has done in blatant violation of our constitution that constitute grounds for impeachment. So we want to make it very, very clear that as a, a coalition, uh, working with the LSK and other uh, interested parties, uh, we, are, we, are, we are working on it. And that is very, very clear. But also for the media, I think we want to thank you for the highlighting of this very successful protest by the Gen Z's. You are also victims. Many of you actually got injuries. We say poorly to you, but we are also saying you must join us in uh, taking action against this police brutality. And we're not just talking about our local media, the international media also. I saw one international foreign reporter who was, who, who was injured, and we are happy that the international media took interest in this matter. We saw Al Jazeera, we saw CNN and we are happy with that coverage and support that we received. But however, we are still very concerned that the international community, our partners, have been very quiet. Blatant violation of human rights in Kenya, both last year when we had our demos, uh, our friends uh, in the UK, in the US were quiet, and uh, they turned a blind eye to the violation of human rights in Kenya. Now, and last year. We are happy the AU has come out, but why are our international friends quiet? Is it because they have their blue-eyed boy, uh, their puppet here? They do not want to condemn when he's doing blatant things like what we have seen the death of this young man and 75 others. When there is corruption, other nations have been sanctioned. We saw the Speaker of the Ugandan uh, Assembly being sanctioned by one of uh, uh, the countries, but when we have corruption in Kenya, a blind eye has been turned to William Ruto and the endemic corruption in the Kenya Kwanzaa government, including the fertilizer scandal we saw recently, the minister is still serving. Why are there double standards, we dare ask? Thank you. Thank you. Quickly. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, um, I, want, <coughs> I want to bring the apologies uh, of a cold. I want to bring the apologies of uh, my party leader, Raila Odinga. He has just uh, from South Africa uh, and is trying to rest, so he could not make it here. But he's with us. Uh, and I, I want also to take this opportunity to thank the 115 members of parliament, mainly from our coalition, who stood by with the Kenyans to reject uh, the finance bill uh, 2024. I'm also saddened that uh, some of our members decided to vote yes against the, the, their people's wishes. And as a coalition or as a party, 
will take uh, disciplinary measures against those particular members because, as you have been informed, our own Secretary General communicated to them what they were supposed to do, and unfortunately, they never did that. Uh, some of them are using local politics about the finance bill. Finance bill affects all Kenyans, does not affect a particular local community. So we have to come together as Kenyans and make sure that Kenyans get the right thing that is supposed to help them prosper as Kenyans in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Probably one minute, uh, like Robert Boy, you have anything? Today we are here and we are mourning the death of our hero, a young man called Rex, who was shot yesterday by a police officer. And I went earlier on to the city Muchari and I can confirm that Rex is no more. And I want to say that Rex's only crime was to fight for the rights of Kenyans. His only crime was to come out and ensure that he fights the draconian finance bill. The crime of only ensuring that the price of unga is not increased, the price of other goods, food stuff are not increased. And therefore, may Rex Sol rest in peace. To the Inspector General of Police, we demand that you resign. Koome, we know that you are vicariously liable to the murder with malice a forethought of one Rex. And therefore, you must resign, and the DPP must institute a criminal charge of murder against your person. To the police officer who murdered Rex, you must surrender yourself before Kenyans catch up with you. Because if they get you on the streets, it will be something different. I want to state clearly to the police officers, your work is to keep law and order. Your work is not to kill Kenyans. We are many than you. Suppose we decide to destroy you, what do you think will happen? Will we have a nation? And lastly, to the 115 members of parliament who voted, congratulations for standing with Kenyans. You voted with Kenyans. To the 204 members, you voted with the oppressors. We know you are political dealers. You are not political leaders. We know you are leaders who have a mission, but not a vision. A mission to destroy the future of this nation. A mission to ensure that the finance bill raises the cost of living in this nation, but not a vision to change the future of this nation for the best. To Zakayo, I want to tell you that you are still on the tree. Gen Z's are cutting down the tree. Iyo muti ndiyo itakatwa, jumekata kushuka. To Patane next week, let there be demonstrations everywhere in the country, in every ward, in every constituency, in every sub-county, in every county, and across the nation. Let us proceed with the struggle. Thank you and God bless you. Excellency, for this opportunity so that uh, we can correct two issues that I have noted. One is that, uh, Excellencies, we noticed that uh, there was a tendency of those uh, two or four uh, uh, cronies of the Kenya Kwanzaa administration who are trying to imply that Gen Z are not knowledgeable enough to know what was contained in the finance bill. Maybe it is a high time you realize that these are young people that have just finished university and have no jobs because this administration has not created a conducive environment for employment. So that's the first thing we need to clarify. The second one is that uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa team in the house kept implying that there is something good they have done to Kenyans. Every time they spoke, they implied that they have removed uh, VAT on, uh, on, on, on bread. They kept saying they have removed uh, motor vehicle tax. The reality is there was no VAT on bread. There was no motor vehicle tax. Those were ideas in their brains. So they cannot be telling us that they have removed something that was not already in law. What they did is that they actually created new laws that are going to be punitive to Kenyans and we are saying that the fight continues because we are going to the 
committee of the whole, whole house on Tuesday and we'll keep fighting for Kenyans. Aluta continua.